France 24's chief foreign editor Rob Parsons has been staying on top of this story for us. He joins us now for more. Rob, first of all, are we going to see a big change in U.S. foreign policy under Joe Biden? Well, I think we'll certainly see a, a change. The, the semantics will definitely be, be different. And we won't see the sort of mercurial, unpredict, unpredictable, sometimes completely inexplicable approach uh, that Don, Donald Trump manifested in his relationship uh, with Vladimir Putin. We'll go towards something which is much more stable, much more of a traditional defense of U.S. foreign policy interests, whether that's defending values or whether it's defending alliances. Uh, and already we've seen uh, Joe Biden put forward a pretty strong list of complaints to Vladimir Putin. Uh, you mentioned some of them there, uh, in including this cyber spying, uh, the solar winds attack uh, in 2020 on the United States, which some suspect could still be ongoing, uh, the offering, uh, uh, alleged offering by, the, by Russia to the Taliban of bounties to kill American soldiers in Afghanistan, uh, the interference in the U.S. election of 2016, uh, and so on and so forth, not forgetting Ukraine, of course. You know, the list is extremely long. But at the same time, you know, Joe Biden offers a sort of stability and experience that the Russians perhaps feel that they can engage with. Don't forget, this is a man, Joe Biden, who's been going first to the Soviet Union uh, and then to Russia since 1978. That gives him an immense amount of experience. And the Russians see him as a, a known entity. They, they pretty much know what to expect from him. And they, I suspect, rather like the predictability that he brings with him. Hence the very quick agreement on the new START treaty. Uh, Vladimir Putin put it to the to the State Duma, the Russian parliament, uh, I think yesterday, today, it's already been passed by the State Duma in its first reading. It's got to go to the Federation Council, the higher chamber. Uh, but already that's progress on something which had suffered badly in the four years of Donald Trump. Rob, what about human rights? Joe Biden spoke to Vladimir Putin about the Russian opposition leader who's now been arrested again, Alexei Navalny. Can yeah. we expect the U.S. to be more aggressive on that issue? Yeah, I think this is going to be one of the big changes from the, uh, the Donald Trump years. You know, if this arrest of uh, Alexei, Alexei Navalny had happened uh, under Donald Trump's watch, if the demonstrations we've seen and the mass arrests that we've seen uh, over the, in the, the last week had happened under Donald Trump's watch, nothing like the reaction uh, that we're, we're seeing now would have happened. If you remember when uh, Navalny was poisoned last summer, uh, the reaction from the United States was extraordinarily slow, uh, despite the fact that U.S. allies had been coming up with very strong statements. It took a, a long time for Donald Trump uh, to react at all. That is clearly going to change now uh, under Joe Biden, who will be offering a much stronger defense uh, for U.S. values, for the defense of human rights. And it will see a concomitant increase of, if you like, U.S. interference, and this is certainly the way the Russians will see it, in Russian internal affairs. But in a way, too, Vladimir Putin only has himself to blame for doing this. By allowing the, uh, and it's almost universally accepted that this is what happened, the Russian intelligence services to poison Navalny and then to arrest him when he come back, came back to Moscow a couple of weeks ago. He's propelled Navalny right to the center of international politics. He's made him effectively uh, the leader of the opposition in the eyes of the international community. And suddenly, uh, this reminds me of Ale uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn. I'm not suggesting that Navalny has anything like that sort of moral stature, but in the perception of the West, of Navalny. It certainly has had that sort of effect, and neither Biden nor Putin can ignore that. Rob, thanks for that. France 24's chief foreign editor, Rob Parsons.